Joe here at the 2010 Toronto After Dark Film Festival, and tonight we just screened Joshua Garnell's All About Evil, and uh, the names that come to mind are H.G. Lewis, John Waters, uh, Doris Wishman, and uh, here's Joshua here right beside me. Hello. Welcome to Toronto. Thank you. It's your first time here. It is. It's my first time in Toronto, and it's been um, an incredible experience, and the festival's been amazing. Uh, well, we're very happy to have you here. And um, looking at your filmography, you've done several shorts, and this would be your first feature, All About Evil. Yeah, I did um, a bunch of, like, like literally no-budget shorts. You know, a lot of people say that, but these are, like, it was, like, whatever, you know, I always say I made it with a wig and a dream, and, uh, and yeah, so jumping from that to actually having a budget and trucks and a crew was, a, an, an, like, a dream come true. Then that had to be quite a learning curve. Um, what was that experience like? Yeah, it was. It was sort of like, um, it was because I'm a performer in San Francisco mm -hmm. and I perform as this sort of, uh, this, um, I don't know, it's a drag queen version of a, of a cult movie leader in a way. Um, I kind of built up this sort of community of artists and people who could do costumes and shoot the movies. And, and so a lot of those people actually came to work on the movie. Um, but we were also mixing in a lot of like the indie film worlds, you know, professionals. And I think the marriage of the two, uh, it went really well. So some of it felt very um, familiar to me, and some of it was like a total, you know, um, crash course um, in, in indie filmmaking. And um, earlier during the Q and A, you said the screenplay you spent about three years writing that. Now. When I first was watching the film and the, and the credit sequence, which was amazingly put together, um, some of the names that popped out there were you like Natasha Leone, um, Noah Segan, you know, Cassandra Peters. When uh, my question is, uh, when you were writing that screenplay, did you have these people in mind, or was that something that you know came later in casting? Um, I, honestly, when I wrote the screenplay, because I was writing it from this sort of point of view of like um, a, a really truly no budget filmmaking world. I didn't have any of those names in mind at all. Um, I think I ended up with this sort of dream cast. Um, one thing that I feel like uh, I learned is, is that script is really the most important thing as far as attracting um, talent. And so I'm glad that I took my time writing it. But no, I had no, none of those people in mind. And then once the screenplay was done and I actually was friends with Elvira and doing road shows with Elvira, I got to like perform with Elvira, but then I got to see Cassandra as the mom. She has a teenage daughter who's into like indie rock and roll, kind of going through her own um, rebellious stage. And I would look at Cassandra and go like, oh my God, she's kind of like the mom in my movie, you know? So that, that's where some of the pieces got put together. Now, um, raising money for any project is, uh, it could, doesn't matter if it's $200 or $200 million, it's always a struggle. Uh, how did you actually uh, approach investors with this? Did you have like, uh, show them your shorts or did you have some kind of package to... Well, I actually, um, maybe like a few years before uh, we actually found financing, while I was writing the screenplay, um, Mark Cuban, who owns the Dallas Mavericks and HDNet and uh, I don't know, tons of stuff, you know, he's a billionaire. He became um, aware of what I was doing as Peaches Christ and actually executive produced a TV, a national American television show for me and actually did, we created a, 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 a version of my Midnight Mass show for television where we would screen cult movies in high definition. I actually am responsible for doing the high definition transfer of coffee and uh, Mommy Dearest and Flash Gordon. And, um, and so Mark produced that, and I think because Mark was interested in me as an artist, um, it gave me the belief that I could find financing. That was really, it was like, I know a billionaire, you know? I actually know someone who owns a movie theater chain. Um, and then I asked Mark for the money, and uh, I didn't get it from Mark. Um, he was very, very kind. He loves the movie. He's been very supportive of me in the movie. But I think because I believed that it could happen, I put together the package that you need to have to take and be serious with investors. So I had talent attached. I had I had crew. I had producers. You know. Um, and so when when Mark wasn't the guy, uh, we actually had this really solid package to take out and um, and show investors. And um, perhaps probably going totally um, off of that topic, but when I'm watching the film, you have like some pretty crazy gore elements in that. Uh, 
Do you have any problems with the MPAA when you show them the cut? They haven't seen it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not. It's not it's rated because you haven't got distribution yet. No. So it's it's um it's still doing. We're doing this bizarre road show. You know, I've really had this sort of um this wish that I could I could roll the movie out in a sort of this William Castle. Um, style and so we actually do a whole performance piece and, and gimmicks and the audience is involved. Um, so so our you know a lot of people finish their movies and they're immediately looking for distribution. Well, I was afraid that if we got distribution too early, I wouldn't be able to do it the way I want to because once you sell your movie, it's then their movie, they own the movie. So um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm I'm really thrilled that I get to present the movie you know my way right now and so we didn't need the MPAA um, it's almost like a concert or like it is go on tour all over America it's really strange yeah like and, and a lot of the Thomas Decker wrote a song and performs it with the, the younger cast and it's very rock and roll and Mink Stoll and I as Peaches do like a, a duet I mean the actors from the movie are actually up there singing and dancing and it's like this this very old vaudevillian um, true road show it's very expensive and exhausting, so I don't necessarily recommend it for every filmmaker. Mm -hmm. But but for you, that's what you wanted to do with it. And I think it's the truest expression of what we do. I grew up loving cult movies. Uh, I feel like I was saved. I think Rocky Horror and John Waters and Wes Craven saved my life. You know, like I think, I think, I believe, you know, movies are my religion, theaters are my church, and... I just think that for me, being able to present this movie to fans the way that I want to, um, with a drag freak show, is is the is the, the right way to present this movie. Um, and your, your actors, you were speaking um, about Noah Segan a little bit earlier, and um, I had the uh, opportunity to speak with him last year in this very spot, and we talked about Warren Oates and you know tough guy yeah. actors, and there he is in drag in your movie. Yes. What a fearless actor. He is a fearless actor, and Noah is incredibly butch, as you as you recognize, but he's also completely committed, you know, and he's, he's he, um, he's just incredible, and when we broke, when we looked at the character of Adrian, um, Noah really wanted to be inside my head, and really wanted to, to kind of, you know, come up with something unique, and so we started talking about how, you know, it would be a lot of fun to play with extremes, and, and so we started saying, I, I kind of was suggesting, um, we look at Norman Bates and Buffalo Bill. So I wanted this sort of like effeminate, um, sort of psycho Bates Motel sort of thing going on, but also unhinged tranny rage. And uh, when I watched the movie, I'm like, he's doing it. He, he really it. is doing exactly what I asked him to do. He's amazing and he's super talented and he really thinks a lot about it. And as far as the drag goes, I think he liked it. No, I don't know. <laughs> Like, I, uh, when I'm watching that movie, and I did not know that you were that character, you know what I mean? You right. just totally transform into that character. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, I've been performing as Peaches for like 15 years, I would say. I really created Peaches as, as sort of this weird expression of my love for things like Elvira and Pee Wee Harmon and Freddy Krueger and the idea of a character who could exist in movies and on TV and in life, you know, you, you could be interviewing Peaches if we had five more hours, you know, but you know, I mean, she could be wherever and I love that um, idea and so writing her into the movie was actually Natural. kind of a, well, it was kind of a challenge, actually, writing her into the movie wasn't as much of a challenge as it's actually doing the movie, you know, I actually shot the movie um, as Joshua for the first week and then Peaches hit the set I think on like day 9 or 10 and I remember there was this real shift for the audience or not the audience the, the cast and the crew and they all you, you should ask Noah I mean they all talk about how it was fun having Peaches on set for about an hour but Peaches is a harder director to work for you know would you direct as Peaches? I ha would have because to you're, you're you sometimes you can't take that off and then do the scene we actually there is there is there, there is uh vocabulary created for this very reason so if it were me on set that day they would they would say Joshua was here and on the walkies they'd call for Joshua if, if Peaches was in the scene and in full wig and costume and everything they would they would say Peaches and that would kind of mean that I was camera ready 
um, if what normally was happening was my makeup was on, but I'd be dressed like this. So they have Peach's dressers ready to go, but it was so uncomfortable that I would actually be dressed, and that was Peachawa. So if Peachawa were on the set, they would say, who's on the set? And they would say, this is the director of the movie, like Peachawa, Peachawa's here. Like these butch union crew guys, you know, like it's Peachawa, Peachawa's here. They'd be like, well, get Peachawa into Peaches, you know. And that, they knew what that meant. That took like 15, 20 minutes. Very surreal. Well, yeah, and everybody had to adapt. They did, and, and her facial expressions, you know, Patrick Bristow, who plays the, um, the, the, news, the newscaster guy, great improv actor, was in the Groundlings for years, was on Ellen's TV show in Showgirls. I actually met him through doing Showgirls, and, and he, he was like, Josh was very nice and zen and sweet and patient and worked with the actors, and then he was like, and then there's Peaches, you know, and they didn't like it because I was, you know, I was uncomfortable, and I think I was shorter with them, and also the makeup, you look fucking mean, you know, you look scary. Am I allowed to cuss? Oh, yeah. Oh. It's after dark. Right, exactly. Okay. And it goes now. Yeah, perfect.